going to spend the next 50 minutes or so focused on AFS and several different aspects of AFS. And we've talked about some things before. I appreciate having the chance to talk with a few of you last night. And for those of you who weren't there last night, thanks for joining us today. AFS helps producers be ready. Now you've obviously heard the Be Ready campaign from Case Irish. And if you look at the connection that that has enabled between us and our customers, it really has worked. It's more than a slogan for us. It is, in fact, a connection between us and our customers. It has defined how we approach our customers. If you look at our customer base, and we use the word pro producer, our customer base, our core customers, are professional producers, people who make their living farming. And if you think about the world that those people live in, you're looking at both planning ahead and reacting. They didn't plan for a drop this year, but maybe they did plan for certain financial capabilities. And that's where the Be Ready comes in. And Be Ready is about being symbolic for being their partner. Be Ready is about that we want to know what makes them tick. We want to be close enough to them that they consider us as part of their operation. And it's not about the iron, it's about the relationship. AFS is a big part of that. Advanced Farming Systems ties into that. And we're going to look at that in the next few minutes. There are three principal things that drive our view of precision farming, of AFS. And the first is certainly more capability. What do we mean by more capability? Well, the first is integration. There's really a very small handful of players in this industry that have a truly integrated product into their product offering, truly integrated technology into their product offering. And if you look at where we are in this industry, and if you go on farms, there's still an awful lot of boxes and cabs that are add-ons. And yet, if you talk to those professional producers, precision farming is now mainstream. What's the gap? The gap is the integration into the whole good. Now, I understand that earlier today you saw a new large square bailer. What runs that large square baler? An AFS Pro 700. The same box that runs a flagship combine. The same box that provides steering to a road track spider, or a magnet, or a sprayer, or provides machine control plus agronomic control for an early riser plant, and so on and so on. Part of that more capability is one box and one common control system integrated across the whole goods. Compatible across all those whole goods. But that's the box side, that's the hardware side. What about software? That's equally as important because you've got to have a software suite which is robust enough to cover all these technologies, whether it's flow control or rate control on a sprayer or a row control on a planter or guidance or whatever it may be. You've got to control all those technologies across all these multiple vehicle platforms. And the background software to manage all that data, create prescriptions, come back and manage another cycle of data, has got to be robust enough to cover the range of technologies across the range of whole good platforms you're dealing with. So the other part of that is that software suite. And that's what we're going to spend a little bit more time talking about today. But more capability is step one of three. The next piece is less complexity. When you talk to customers about technology, they want leading technology. They want the capability. They get it that this is important to their business. They also are very vocal about telling you it can't be hard to use. It's got to be easy to use. It's got to be accessible. Whether it's my dad, whether it's the hired man, whether it's the retired guy that comes out and helps on the weekend, whatever it is, as this becomes mainstream in the vehicle, 
then whoever gives up in that vehicle has to be able to use it. It can't just be the stereotypical 22-year-old technology whiz kid, right? It's got to be everybody because it's mainstream. So if you look at that Lex complexity, let's come back and see how that ties into integrated. It ties into integrated because if you've got a single display with a single operating system across all these different products, when that person comes out of a magnet, goes into a Steiger, guess what? Identical system. When they switch over and maybe they're in the fall and they're helping run the combine, guess what? Same user interface, same display, same control system. And if you look at all the different functions and you look at the things here, same machine and implement control. Think about a planner that we're running the agronomic functions, we're controlling population on that planner, but it's also integrated fold, it's also integrated market control, it's also integrated row shutoffs. Everything is in that same user, user interface. And then that same user interface is the combine and so on. So if you take the functions across the platforms and it's all integrated and it's all seamless and it's all got the same look and feel, that is what a customer means by less complexity. They get to sit in the machine and say, oh, I remember this, I know this, because it's the same across all those different functions and all those machines. But that's the first two. The third one really has to stand as well, because when we all talk about technology, what do we think? It's got to work. And it was one thing when it was an add-on. It was one thing when it was, well, I bought it, I put it in the machine, and if it doesn't work, well, okay, I'll go back to doing it the old way. No, not anymore. When you get to built-in, not added on, it's part of the machine, it's got to work all the time. All the time. Now here's a catch. Let's think about telematics. We're talking about vehicle communication. Just to put us or ourselves in a reference, does this work all the time? Or Verizon. Or Verizon. <laughs> or, 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 right? We know that story. And so we're almost there. As an industry, as we get more mainstream, and when Emily is talking to you about AFS Connect and telematics, there's a reason that we use the cell communication capability that we do. And there's a reason that we have multiple pathways for communication, all right? Because we can't always count on one signal all the time. But this is still our weak link, particularly when we get to telematics in terms of now you're really branching out the complexity of the system is a lot bigger because you're not just contained in the vehicle. But if we look at inside the vehicle, what happens when guidance goes down in the tractor? Now? Typically the tractor shuts down. I don't want crooked rows. I don't want the guy steering that tractor. Oh no! Heaven forbid! So we get it that when we talk about that first step of more capability through integration, we are also talking about the third step of maximum uptime. Because it's, if it's fully integrated into the machine, it's going to run like the machine is. It's not an add-on box. Now the other point on this slide is simply kind of an industry standard that we all take for granted, but we needed to put it in here, which is we do still have these varying levels of accuracy. Now one of the things that's interesting in the, the industry is how quickly RTK level accuracy really is growing. And it's not necessarily all a pure, now almost old-fashioned kind of RTK network per se. It may be one of the substitutes for a correction signal that gives you RTK style accuracy. But that really is growing and what's driving that? Well that's kind of easy. When the upsell to RTK level accuracy is five to 10 grand, and five years ago it was 50 grand, people are gonna say, why not? And that's what's driving it. It's the classic technology adoption curve, in that as the technology gets more accessible, more people can get an ROI by using it. So that's what's driving that part. 
So you've seen really the three kind of philosophical almost drivers for us in AFS. The capability, less complexity, and more uptime. So that gets us to really the whole other part of the story with AFS. Because when we think about the technology, when we think about capability, less complexity, and maximum uptime, we're really thinking in the technology box. And it really doesn't matter what kind of technology you're using. If it doesn't work, if you can't get support when you need it, it turns into a really expensive burden instead of something to use. And so when we talk about raising the bar with AFS, the focus is going to shift the support. It is not about the technology. It is about the support. And this is a place where Case IH is truly going to differentiate itself in the marketplace, and you're about to see a couple of ways that that happens. One of the things that we're very much focused on is certifying Case IH AFS dealers and really making sure that at the dealer level, the first point of contact with the customer, they have everything that it takes to support the customer. And if we think about the technology bucket of stuff, separate from the support bucket of stuff, in the technology thing, this phrase of built in, not added on, guess what? That applies to support too. It's not an extra for our dealer or for us, and we'll see that in a minute, to have support. It's not an add-on. It's got to be built into the dealership, just like it's built into Case IH, and you're going to see that. And that's training, that's people, that's facilities, that's technology, all at that dealer level. So let's look at a few things when we talk about an AFS certified dealer. Let's look at a few things we're requiring them to do. Well, number one, they've got to have people on staff dedicated to AFS. That's kind of a, a no-brainer that, yeah, somebody knows what they're doing, and they're dedicated to it. The next one, what do we mean by that? When we say a dealer business plan for precision farming, well, you could look at that and say, oh, yeah, they've got to hit certain sales targets. Well, that's true, but that's not what it means. That is not what that bullet point means. A business plan is they are going to have certain amounts of resources in their dealership dedicated to supporting customers on precision farming. And they are going to pay for those, invest in those resources, and pay for them by the business they're going to do. That's not a sales goal. That's an ROI to our dealership for taking care of the customer. That's what that bullet point means. A showroom display, okay, that's kind of a checkbox, yeah, we gotta display the product, we gotta be able to talk about it. The next one is absolutely core, technical training. It's one thing to sell somebody a box and say, oh yeah, go stick it in your tractor. It is a whole other thing to have on the ground at a dealership level truly competent technical capability to solve problems when they come up. And that's what it's going to take. So we put a fair amount of effort into, if you're AFS certified, you have people on staff that have significant technical training. Now this next one, we talk about required tooling. Tooling, that's, that sounds like something where, you know, you got to have a special wrench. Yeah. You gotta have better have specialized software to analyze these systems. It's not tooling in the sense of a wrench, it's tooling in the sense of a virtual wrench of electronics and software capability. That's part of the game. Minimum stocking levels, okay, that's more of a sales related thing. But we want to know that our dealer is in the business. Again, it's built in, not added on. That's the point of that. And then we get to that even inside our parts and service capabilities, there are relationships there that are tied to precision farming. If you go to that commitment to customers at the dealer level, we look at this and we talk about red shirts and red trucks. 
This is the company side. We're switching from dealer facing customer to company side. Now this happens to be a training event at our Nevada, Iowa, Ames, Iowa training center last year. And this is a portion of our field staff. But it's something that we're really part proud of because it sets us apart. It is an absolutely core part of who Case IH is. Over two-thirds of the people who work for Case IH are based in the field. And if they're based in the field, they wear a red shirt and they drive a red truck. And there's a statement there. We are in the field with the producer, with our customers, to serve them. So when we talk about a commitment to AFS, when we talk about a commitment to supporting our customer, let's talk about those people. Because I want to also tie in built in, not added on. We don't have in our group a first layer separate group that supports AFS. They don't exist because we expect our home goods person to support AFS. If you're a Case IH tractor specialist, you are going to know how AFS runs a magnet. An early riser planner that can't run without a Pro 700, a Case IH planner specialist is going to know everything there is to know about that software. Again, it is part of the product. That's our approach. That's our philosophy. Now we have backup for those people. We have second tier, third tier support for those people. But again, it is built in. And it's built into our organization. And in fact, you guys know that before you were here, we did a lot of, on, of training right here. And AFS was a major part of that and every single field person we have on the ground went through that training. So we talk about certified dealers, and we talk about dealer facing the customer, but the other half of what I want you to hear is this is a corporate commitment to supporting the AFS customer through all of our product lines. And that happens with everybody that's in a red shirt, in a red truck and those of us back in headquarters as well. Okay, so that's support. But that's kind of at this kind of personnel level at the dealer and at the company. Let's get a little more specific. There's really two layers of support that we as a company provide that set ourselves apart even more from some of the other folks. And one of them is AFS Academy. AFS Academy is dedicated AFS training. So you're proactive. You don't wait till the person's in the tractor cab. You train them in advance. You say, okay, yeah, that makes sense. All right, so what's so special about this? Well, we have different levels of training that people can go through. One of them is you can go to a centralized case size training facility and go through a three-day seminar. These are really in-depth, all the way in, training seminars. You want to know everything there is to know about a topic? That's it. And they're put on by our own internal, in-house trainers that know their stuff absolutely cold. We own it. We deliver it. We're accountable for it. That's a corporate company commitment from Case IH to our customers. We also do more one-day or two-day based trainings at our dealership locations. And then the last one is the one that is growing in popularity and usage like crazy, which of course it is because it's simple. And that's online. That portal that we talked about, you can go online, you can sign up for a training course, you can pay for it with PayPal, and maybe it's a 15-minute refresher, or maybe it's a 90-minute more in-depth course. And all of that's available online. You buy a new planner, you go through the planner school online. You've got a planner and you want to refresh yourself on a couple of screens, you sign up for a couple of 15-minute courses. The training in advance is an integral part of our approach to the marketplace. It's an integral part of how we support things. So that's the proactive side. But we all know things 
all know that things go wrong when the customer's really sitting in the tractor seat, and maybe it's they just forgot. Uh, which button is it again? Or maybe something went wrong. So the other part is the reactive side. The customer support, the technical support, in more of a traditional point of view of tech support. And so this last spring, we initiated the AFS Support Center, a 24-7, 365, on-call, online support center. And to talk a little bit more about that is Chris Knoll, who is our global head of Case IH Support. Thanks, Chris. Support Center. As Bill mentioned, I head up the uh, global initiative, and uh, so we're going to go through um, some of the points as to the entire, the key component of the AFS Support Center and how that rolls into the entire uh, support plan that Case IH has put together on the AFS purpose. So, what is the AFS Support Center? As Bill just mentioned, 24 7, 365, over the phone, via email support. That means live person, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Truly unmatched in this industry. Let's talk about the staffing a little bit. Who are the guys on the other end of the phone when the customer calls in? We worked very hard at bringing in people who grew up farming, knew the industry, so that they know what the, what the growers and producers are going through and are having issues in the field. Not only that, they're, they, they're bringing in expertise on these products. They have knowledge of AFS already before they come in and can do a full line of technical training. Very highly skilled support engineers in place. When we talk about integration, there's really two pieces to this. One, from an IT standpoint, yes, this is, is a global initiative. So we have four support centers worldwide, and we are linked through our IT and phone system. So that means we can share information back and forth with different regions and understand what's going on in other parts of the world. The other portion of being fully integrated is truly being part of the AFS business unit as a whole so that we have internal resources, product engineering, product managers. It's very easy for the support engineers who are on the phone to get responses and, and go to the engineering department there's a highly technical issue. We can talk to the people who are creating the products. It's, again, this isn't just a call center. Full support center. As Bill mentioned, just having the capability with the infield support. So again, not a call center. We, we're not expecting these guys every day of the year to be in the office tied to a phone. We're sending them to the field. They're going to dealer events. They're helping out uh, with, with technical issues in the field supporting field training, customer training. We have the ability to send these guys out as need be. Let's talk about the data that we're collecting. Because we're not just gonna keep it into ourselves and not, not share the data. So whether it's through the sales territory, the territory sales managers or the service managers, they wanna know what's going on in a particular region, maybe a particular product. We're gonna collect this data, we're gonna share the data in real time. Again, from our IT standpoint, with our system, we can drill down live. We can tell a dealer if they want to know which of their customers have called in, what products they're calling on, what kind of issues they're having. We can do that real time, live data. The concept of being a one-stop shop, what does that mean? It means the customer has one number to call for AFS. We will take that issue, we will drive it to resolution. Even if we have to do some internal researching or, or go to those other internal resources, we will help drive that issue to closure. We don't want to be passing them off to other support groups or other phone lines. The customer calls us, they will receive the resolution from us. And this covers the full line of AFS products. Now, going that connection with the dealerships, well, let's go back to the dealerships. We don't want them to lose their connection to the customer. So we have built in a couple of different things. First of all, the dealerships will help us 
and supporting you know, who, to which customers are calling. So they will actually register the customer. So that before the customer even calls us the first time, we're going to know who they are, we're going to know what they're running, we're going to know what kind of systems they have, we're going to understand who they are before they come in, which from a customer service standpoint is, is huge. Because we'll understand who they are before they ever dial the number. Second point is, we will let the dealerships, even on a real-time basis, know, again, which customers are calling and what issues they're calling them. They'll receive notifications from us throughout the process, from start to close. So these are, again, some of the key points about the AFS Support Center, which is fully operational since the spring. And um, going into the fall season, we're, we're ready to go. So at this point, I'm going to roll it back over to Bill here and talk about some of the uh, additional AFS products. Thank you.